father was a dentist in this property and, uh, and for many years. And there, this little building was sitting there, and, and uh, I didn't know what it was. And one day, uh, at an annual town report, came a picture of my little building with uh, a man and a woman sitting on the step, step selling shad. And I found out that this building was originally uh, Bill Maynard Shad Shack. So I decided this was a Shad Shack. Uh, why not preserve it and make it and convert it to a, a Shad Museum? And uh, with the help of a, a member, his name was George Bernard, the class together and started putting this museum together. First of all, shad is Connecticut's state fish. It's an anatomist fish. It its life in salt water, but it's born in the native rivers, like the Connecticut River, and goes out to sea, and takes about four years to uh, grow up and develop its sexual maturity. And it comes back to the river as poor birth, which is April through June. And, uh, and, and spawn, which means has young baby. And his cycle is repeated over and over again. And it was a very strong part of our heritage growing up here. Uh, and in the history of Connecticut, I mean, it's really the, the fish that provided, the fish that has brought money and made people lots of money through the years. But it was big business. She has been a, a big part of, of the Connecticut River and also the adjoining towns. There were people for each part of the industry. So the guys like my Uncle Rob and Jack and the Harkies and the Brookses, they all netted. But from there, they passed it on to somebody else. They handled the fish. And then there were the boners and then there were the processors. But and also with the time a young guy, 17 or 18, had a chance to make some money by fishing. For, for a young guy in the 50s, it was, a, it was quite, a, quite a bit of money you could make on in a week uh, of fishing. And uh, it, was, it was intense for those uh, few weeks there because you'd be fishing at night, at dusk, until uh, maybe after uh, at midnight, two or three drifts down the Connecticut River in Hagenham. And uh, by the time he got through, uh, getting the fish out of the net, boating the net, and uh, getting the fish down to Spencer's Shad Shack. He may not get home till after one. And I uh, went to school the next morning. I'm not saying I was a great student, but <laughs> I got through it. It's one of the most back-breaking things that you'll ever do. It's not like going to a pond, like where you can catch catfish and you know things like that. It's a grueling, dangerous work. The river is beautiful. Sometimes it can be really bad. I was out the first night one night. It's a spring freshet. The water was high and running. And I was out with the fellow, uh, Tom Armstrong, and we're coming down the river. The river is full of ice and trees coming down. It's catching the net. And it could be raining. One day it was raining out, pouring. <laughs> we look at each other. We say, we're doing this for fun. This experience. Sometimes my, my wife wasn't happy when I come home dressed with shed guts and scales, and my wife would not let me in the house, <laughs> throw, throw me outside, take all my clothes off. But it was a good adventure. It's a very hard, tedious job if you're going to do it every day. And today, the profitability of it is just very small. Sadly, uh, there's less shad fishermen. At one time, even in our town of Higginham, there were 16 boats fishing on the river. Now, there's none. I think this year, there's only four guys that are fishing the entire river. The guys that are still doing it on the river are probably doing it for a little bit of money, but probably more of the history of it, more than anything. A very local treat that is soon to be gone to the wayside, I believe. I think just because of the other fish in the fisheries, the access to other seafood, 
that not many people really know what Shad is anymore, unfortunately. But this important part of our history, and uh, she could tell you on. You know, it's uh, it's really sad that it's dying, but that's why we have this museum to continually educate people and uh, and and pass that history down. That's why we're here to kind of preserve it.